Okay, so let's see how this scoots. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a 2022 Land Rover Range Rover full size with the turbocharged inline six. Now, I purposefully reviewed this right after I just reviewed a new full size with the V8, so I can tell you guys which powertrain you should go for. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in downtown Salt Lake for giving me some time with this vehicle. Check out the inventory in the description down below. And then, on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into the video. So under the hood, we have a turbocharged three liter inline six that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 18 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 395 horsepower and then 406 pound feet of torque. So this does get slightly better fuel economy compared to the V8, but it obviously is down on power. So let's go to the front end of the Range Rover. So first off, you guys can see we do have these distinct body lines on either side of the hood. They kind of are hidden because of the white paint. We have the Range Rover logo that is front and center. And then notice here with the daytime running lights and then the LED headlamps, I think that looks fantastic. And then the grille is actually really flush with the bodywork overall. We do have some metallic gray trim. We have our Land Rover logo here off to the side. Fog lights down below and then you can see parking sensors all along the front end with a camera there, front and center. And yeah, overall, I think it's a really good looking vehicle from a front end perspective. Definitely a little bit more minimalist in design compared to the previous generation, which you can see the previous generation right behind us. And so yeah, there you go. Coming around the side here, we've got 285 millimeter tires wrapped around 23 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. The wheels are all blacked out, which I think contrasts very nicely to the white paint on this particular Range Rover. And then notice here with the parking sensor there, and then you can see the molding for the fender. I think that looks really good. And then notice the accent piece here on the side. It's kind of like a signature thing for the full size. We've got the two-tone design with the roof all blacked out and the mirrors. We have the pop-out door handles just like the Velar, and then the trim here at the bottom is all blacked out. So again, continues with that two-tone theme. And then here's your full side view, and then this one does also have the air suspension. Now here's our key fob. We have our unlock function lock. This is for the lights, and then this is to open up the hatch, as you can see. Popping here into the rear, first off, notice that it is carpeted down below, definitely luxurious. And there's quite a bit of storage space. So this is the shorter wheelbase. I reviewed a longer wheelbase V8. Go check my channel if you can want to see uh, that review in terms of like the storage space difference. But I can tell you, um, first off, got the cargo cover here at the top. And you know, with the third row folded down in the longer wheelbase, it's quite a bit uh, more storage space but this is still really solid and then you guys can see we've got a bunch of controls here for like uh, the cargo cover and then notice with the air suspension down below to raise or lower it and then also the seats as well um, the air suspension right to make it so it's easier to load things up and then you can see a little charging port right there and yeah when you're all done you can fold this one up just with that button but if you want to fold both of them up and just close the whole thing up press the top one and then everything will all close up together. So let's finish things up with the rest of the rear. First off, I love the new taillight design here with the full size. And I have the two black pieces that kind of connect the whole system together. We have our darkened Range Rover logo. It's kind of hard to see on the camera view, but it pops out in person. Black trim here at the bottom. And then you guys can see with the parking sensors and they kind of hide the exhaust tips underneath here, which I think is pretty cool. Again, gives it a cleaner appearance on the outside. I'm sure it helps out with aerodynamic efficiency as well. Now here's the door panel in the rear. First off, you guys will notice we've got beautiful leather trim here at the top. And then we've got this piano black trim down below. And then we have our little seat adjustment control right here. And then more leather trim down below that. Got our door lock and unlock. A few speakers for the sound system. And then here are these seats. So we've got these really nice leather seats. Almost perforated in the center portion. There's kind of like a full view. And we'll pop in. Not as much space as the um, extended wheelbase, actually. Pretty interesting. Seems like, I mean, maybe my, maybe my perception's wrong, but that's what it feels like. Anyways, notice the storage space there. And then we've got our climate controls for the rear. We've got the vents and all of that. And you can see the USBs down below. And then we have this cool like center console thing with the cup holders. You guys saw that already opened. But yeah, other than that, let's head to the front. Now here's the front door panel you guys can see again with the leather trim here at the top and then the piano black trim in the center portion and more leather trim down below. All of our window controls and then notice the memory seat function is built 
into the seat adjustments, which is pretty cool. And we have our controls to like fold in the mirrors, adjust them, all that stuff. And the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring. And then notice it says Range Rover right there. And then here are the front seats. Again, really nice leather, perforated all down the center, as you can see. Notice the pedal layout down below. That's just to open up the hatch. You can see the leather trim here and then on the dash as well. And then you can see the metallic trim on the side. Let's pop in. So here is the steering wheel. We've got really nice leather all around and then got darker stitching on the center. It's actually a two spoke design. I think this is the best looking two spoke I've seen to date. Paddle shifters here on the back and you can see the regular controls for like the turn signal light stock, winch wiper stock. Notice the finish on the ends is actually really nice. Cruise control here on the face of the steering wheel. And it does have the little screen faces. So like it changes when you press the button and then notice with the airbag cover how it's stitched and covered in leather. And there you go. Now here is the center gauge cost. You guys can see you've got the speed over there on the left side. You got the RPMs over on the right side. And then again, if I press that little button on the left side of the steering wheel, I can scroll through some different menus here uh, to go through different bits of info on the Range Rover and obviously settings with stuff so I can customize it uh, to whatever I'd like. But yeah, overall, I think it's a cool looking gauge cluster. Now here's the infotainment system. First off, if I pop it in reverse, I do get a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and then notice the bird's eye view as well. And then I have the off-road mode that I can switch to. This has a center and a rear locking differential, um, which obviously will also benefit you if you're driving in like snowy conditions and all that stuff, if you, if stuff, if you start to get stuck rather. Um, and then notice here when I pop it uh, into drive, it'll actually give me these options to change the camera view. So parking this is definitely going to be super easy. We have the shortcut bar here on the side and you guys are probably noticing I'm having to like click into the screen. It's got that kind of like haptic feedback function, which I don't know, I, th I think it's pretty fun. It's got the slope assist and our compass lets us know our elevation that we're at currently weight sensing all that. And then if I press the menu button again, notice it'll pull up with more stuff like your valet mode. I can go into the climate section if I want to customize everything that's happening with the front or with the rear climate as well. Um, overall, really easy to use. And the clicking thing, right, it does have a slight learning curve to it, but once you use it, it just becomes second nature. We've got our analog controls for the climate system down below. So first off, we press them. We've got this to turn on the heated seats. Now this particular one does not have air conditioned seats, um, but notice we can also press the seat button right here and then it'll pull that up with the screen, which is pretty cool. Um, anyways, you've got other controls for the climate system. And also if I pull the dial forward, notice it'll go to fan speed. If I push it in, it goes back to the temperature. So like lots of like doubling, tripling, quadrupling into controls with this whole setup. Again, more of that piano black trim. Sorry about the glare there, it's pretty bright. Got some extra storage space here with the cup holder situation. Shifter for that eight speed automatic transmission, your stop start button and then your rated control. And then notice here with the storage space in front and then the center console. Then we have this cool dual glove box situation. So glove box at the top, nice leather trim on the face, glove box on the bottom. Again, tons of leather trim here on the dash, all looks fantastic. But also speaking of this, press this up, that lets us change the drive modes. We have a bunch of different drive modes we can go through. So we have their eco, dynamic, and obviously comfort is what started in grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, and then your wade mode. Those will change the transmission, air suspension, all that kind of stuff, depending on the drive mode that you go into. It also shows you here on the center as well. And then up top here, we do have a panoramic center. Look how nice the grab handles are in this. Controls for the sunroof and we got the camera mirror, which is a nice bit of safety technology. So here's our window sticker for the full size. You guys can see here with like the powertrain setup and all the other standard equipment. Here's your base price. Sorry about that. $104,000 before options. This one has a few options added to it. And then here's your total MSRP, $120,085. Let's take it out and see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the hood. Hope you can see the heads up display now. Both the mirrors, which do have blind spot monitoring. And then throughout the rest of the rear. And Let's set off. So setting off here in the full size, something that I noticed is kind of interesting is illuminated here, we have hill descent control and then we have low range and then there's an EV button. And I've pressed it several times and it doesn't do anything. I don't think it's for this model. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section below if I'm just being stupid, but they are gonna have a hybrid version out soon. And so 
I think that this is just like not a blank switch because it says EV, but like it's also functions as a blank switch. But anyways, your low range and your held sign controls there. I don't know, I think it's funny. Anyways, the new full size, it's so comfortable. Um, you have this like double armrest situation, which is kind of weird because you have the armrest in the center console. Um, I guess they're just going to keep that armrest thing there because it's a Range Rover thing. But um, yeah, resting your elbows, comfortable. Seat comfort's amazing. The seats just like are so cozy. I really like the uh, feeling of it. And the cabin is really well insulated. Like we're in downtown, so like which can be a noisy area. And it's just, I'm completely isolated in here which I really appreciate. And this has 23s and it still rides really smooth actually. Now, if you want a slightly more compliant ride, then just go with the standard 21s, right? Now, some people might not think that will look as cool because the 23s do look great on this, but again, smaller wheels will give you a little bit more compliance because you have a little bit more sidewall with the tires. Um, but aside from wheel talk, ah, get it? Wheel talk, real talk. I thought it was funny. Um, it's just, it's such a comfortable experience. And again, I'm in the eco mode. I'll pop into the comfort mode or the auto, not the comfort, auto terrain response. That's probably what most of you will drive this in most of the time. Just let it do its thing. And I'm driving this back to back to the V8. I do want to make a lot of comparisons to the V8. So first off from a low end perspective, this, and, and I know this might be controversial with people at Land Rover and I might get uh, crucified for this. I think this feels a little bit better than the V8 um, because you get kind of like this instant push right off the line. It's not super powerful, but it's like this instant push. And then once that push kind of dies off, then it kind of gets into the turbo side of things. And so it's very linear. It's very smooth. And I can feel that this doesn't have as much torque as the V8. It definitely doesn't have as much torque, but I feel like at low speeds, if, if I just put you in both cars, you would not be able to tell too much of a difference, but you might say that this drives a little bit better because you don't have to put your foot into the pedal quite as much. Even though this is down on power, it feels like it just has just a little bit more push right off the bat, okay? Um, but aside from that, super, it's quieter than the V8, that's for sure. So this is definitely gonna give you more of like a luxury experience because it, because again, less sound. I'm gonna pop into the dynamic, oops, not that way. There we go, dynamic program. Gonna see how this kind of, goes about its whole thing. Okay, so let's see how this scoots. <laughs> so yeah, that's where you feel the difference. When you go full throttle, you definitely do feel difference. This is not slow by any means. I need to emphasize that. This is not a slow vehicle. It gets up and moves, but the V8 has significantly more horsepower. It's got more torque. And when you're full throttle, you feel the difference. So let's sum things up. Exterior wise, this actually looks the same as the V8. <laughs> they look the same on the outside because these have similar exterior packages. Um, and interior is super similar as well, funny enough. Um, so that's not why you're gonna go from one powertrain to the other is because of the interior exterior. Um, but yeah, just, I love the new minimalist styling. I love the interior. It's very high quality, fit and finish is great. And I think that they've done a great job with that. Should you get this over the V8 or should you pony up and pay a little bit more for the V8? Um, I think you should get this engine. Here's why, fuel economy is better which, you know, someone buying this is probably not gonna be affected too much by the increased gas prices, but still you get a little bit better fuel economy. So I think that's a plus where you can drive a little bit longer in between visits to the gas station. Aside from the improvement with fuel economy, on the low end side of things, when you're just driving around town, when you're just casually driving, there's not as much of a difference as what you'd think considering the power outputs. But when you get into it, that's where you really feel the difference. That's where the V8, feels so much stronger, right? Is when you when, when, when you go full throttle, then it's just like the V8 punches just so much harder. Whereas this, you know, it's, it's not quite as aggressive. And so I guess if you've got a lead foot and if you wanna be a race car driver, V8, but if you want the more quiet engine that feels just as good at low speeds, that'll give you kind of more of a luxury experience, inline six is the route to go. And I think that my guess, I think that Land Rover is gonna sell more inline six of these uh, full size than they are with the V8s, just considering how good this powertrain is. That's gonna sum things up for our video on this full size Range Rover with the turbocharged inline six. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in downtown Salt Lake for giving me some time with this. Check out the inventory in the description down below. I'll see all of you in the next video.